here it goes. Okay, so that's the annealing temperature. Now it'll go to this critical red hot. And it could even melt if I'm not careful. Okay, now I'm going to quench it. Oh, shit. I know the tip of that's hot. <laughs> I just did a little... Hey, this video is mostly about the uh, heat treat treatment and what I learned by researching it and then a test with the screw. But I'm worried that people are gonna that are into watches are gonna be frustrated by all these kind of technical videos. So if you're not interested in this video, just don't watch it. But uh, I also wanted to let you know, like I'm still very interested in repairing watches. The whole thing with the tools is um, I wanna be able to, you know, make my own screw or replace a stem or whatever is necessary. To repair a watch and as an example of that just today i got 18 watches that i paid less than a hundred dollars for and uh these will all be in my inventory now to to work with but um this one's really cool it's all stainless steel out of shield 1936 that's the caliber number um and it's working it just needs a revision this is a FHF Fontaine Mellon uh, 28. Also just needs a revision. Fontaine Mellon is the, and the new crystal. That's the company that made the trench watch movement that I did recently. And then this is a Solora ETA 2878 that's working quite well and in good condition and all stainless steel. And this is just three of the watches of the 18. Six of them have radium on them. Um, that I've gone through already and made notes about what the movements are and then um, they'll kind of go into inventory either as parts watches or the ones that I like I'll, I'll revise them and get them working again so um, now on to the video about the heat tre treating uh, screws and other steel parts that have been made on the lathe in my last video I made a screw for this micrometer on my new lathe and um, I was wondering if it needs to be hardened after it's been made and the answer is no I'm pretty sure um, but I but I was also wondering about the stem and there's like heat treatment on small parts can make them stronger but from what I understand it's more complicated than what you can do uh, kind of without the proper oven to regulate the temperature. Um, but I, I wanted to play around with it anyway. And the evidence that it's not something that you can do uh, at home is uh, there's this watchmaker, Nicholas Hacko, who does, he they did a piece about heat treatment of watchmaking micro components. I'll put a link in the description. And they have this machine, a Borel machine that what I understand it is that first thing you do is you harden it. So you take it up to a critical temperature where it turns red hot and then you quench it real fast. But then it's very hard and brittle. And so th then you need to soften it again uh, by taking it up to not as high of a temperature and bringing it down very slowly. And then you end up with a hard but a strong hard part as opposed to brittle. Um, but in order to do that, you need the, you need an oven that will do all of that at the right speeds, particularly the second half where you cool it off slowly, because it's it's coming down from like fourteen hundred degrees Fahrenheit, and and like a hundred degrees per hour lower, something like that. So you can't just do it by with a torch. Now, what you can do with a torch is you can blue steel. So I think that'll still be interesting. And I picked up a torch for five bucks that goes very hot, uh, and I'll show you. I'm going to try to mess around with just a random screw, make it red hot, quench it, and then see how fragile it is after doing that, because that should make it hard but fragile. Um, and the reason I was interested in this is because I'm going to make a stem, and I was like, I was wondering if I should make the stem from scratch or make the stem from another stem. And if I make the stem from another stem, do I need to soften the metal and then reharden it? So the answer to all that is, um, 
Bob Inchak, who's this guy I've referenced in other videos who went to a watchmaking school, he, he did a piece here, which I'll also put a link in the description, about making a stem. Took him six tries, and uh, there were some problems with heat treating and brittleness and bending, uh, warping during the heat treatment. So my conclusion is that if I can make my stem from an existing stem, without annealing it before and without heat treating it after, that's gonna be the best because it's gonna be the, st the strength of the original stem I made it from. So whatever they did in the manufacturing process to make the stem in the first place, I'll, I'll inherit those uh, metal qualities. Um, so that's gonna be my, my approach to the stem. And then I also just want to let you know, I'll do that in a, in a different video because I'm gonna, another video is gonna focus on the whole process of, of rebuilding that watch with the, that needs the stem. But I got um, the proper gravers. There were a lot of great comments on my last video. And um, one was that I was using the wrong gravers. So I, I got a high speed steel and a regular WS um, watchmaker's um, graver made by Valorb. Um, and these are quite small and they should be good for the kind of stuff I want to play around with. So that'll, I'll get into that in the next video or when I do the video about the restoration of the Patek Philippe. For now, I wanted to just have some fun and do this test of heat treating a screw and then seeing, and, and quenching it in ice water and then seeing if it, um, if it uh, makes it very brittle, which in theory it should. This is the bar that I made the, um, the screw that's in the micrometer out of. Oh, and then also I should respond to all the great comments I got on the last video, but I, I, I bought some brass at the hardware store just to be able to do some practice um, lathe work with, with four millimeter brass. And then I'm also going to make a, a, sm a much smaller screw. Um, so I have some steel, the same steel I made the first screw out of. I have some like two millimeters steel for that. And then the stem. And then if I can make stems and screws with the lathe, I'll be pretty happy. Okay, so what I want to do, first of all, if you do this, I already tested this dish, and um, this is just a porcelain from France, de Russi. Um, I tested it, and it was fine. It, the, the plate didn't crack or break, but uh, it, 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 I have my this desk mat, and I forgot to do anything to insulate the bottom of the dish from the desk mat. So the, it burned the desk mat. Luckily I had a spare. But to alleviate that, I'm gonna put, I'm gonna, this is a saucer for a coffee cup, which has air under it, and then it has also air here. I'm gonna put it on top of that, and I'm pretty sure that that's gonna be plenty of insulation to not melt anything underneath it. There's a danger that this thing could crack because of the heat being focused in one spot, and it could pop, and I guess, things could fly out of it or something. So I don't know if, I don't recommend doing this at home. I, I, I feel like, because I'll be looking through the microscope, it's not gonna explode in my face or anything like that. And I, like I said, I already tested it. Um, but, uh, okay, so here we go. We're gonna just, let me make sure the microscope is on it. And I'm gonna, I'm gonna try to heat this to critical temperature, meaning red hot, Where is it? Um, and then quench it. So I just want to think about this. I have tweezers. When it's red hot, I want to go like this without dropping it and without burning myself.
And the, the danger from burning yourself is the tip of the torch, obviously. I, I say it's obvious because I have a burn on my hand from the last time. Uh, okay, so take the safety off. You can't see the flame, but I can, and you will see it when the screw gets red hot. And the, the purpose of this is to find out if this, how brittle this thing becomes as a result of this. Oh, the other thing about heat treating, according to uh, Nicholas Hacko website, is that you have to, to do it properly, you have to, the, the piece, work piece has to be protected from um, oxygen. So that also, there we go. So that's the temperature where it would anneal it. Am I running out of gas, Arnie? I just wanted to show you that temperature because it's inter I've never seen something, I've never done this before, so I just found that interesting. You would stop if you want to anneal it as soon as you see it start to glow. That's what I understand. But we want to go to critical temperature, which is red hot. Here it goes. Okay, so that's the annealing temperature. Now it'll go to this critical red hot. And it could even melt if I'm not careful. Okay, now I'm gonna quench it. Oh shit. I know the tip of that's hot. <laughs> Just did a little <laughs> All right, so it just landed in an ice cube and it's done. Um, now I got to put this carefully because this thing is super hot. Now. now I'll dig it out of the ice. Oh, this is also very hot. So this is fine. Now I need to move this away. That can cool down. Everything's fine here. Now in theory that screw has been made to be very hard and very brittle. And that's what you you that's why you don't want to do this. If you blew a screw, it turns blue like much earlier temperature than uh, that critical red. And you can see that happening. So eventually I'll probably play around with bluing some, some components. And bluing is done in oxygen, as I understand it. Uh, or maybe it's, maybe it's in something else. But anyway, the bluing results in a coating on the steel oxidation. It may be controlled by a chemical, I can't remember. But uh, it results in oxidation. Um, such that. Uh, that's what the blue is. It's, a, it's actually a prism effect. Because there's a thin layer of semi-transparent oxide over the surface of the workpiece after you blew it and that has a different indice of refraction from the um, the steel underneath and that that's why you get a kind of blue color but it's actually like a rainbow um, it's the same principle of a rainbow it's like the, the, the light that's refracting through it is changing certain light blue light is refracting differently than the rest of the spectrum Okay, so 
I just wanted to try to break this screw head because in theory, after what's been done to it, it's gonna break really easily. Except for I don't have it in my pin vise firmly enough. I'm worried that I'm going to tap my pin vise, which is a nice Bergeon pin vise. I don't really want to be rotating a hardened screw in the jaws of that. Um, we could do it just with pliers. And eventually I'll just, I'll do something else to it to break it if it's, if I can't do it by, I don't want to damage anything unnecessarily, including my screwdriver. <laughs> Seems pretty strong, <laughs> strong to me. This screw is a little bit dirty. Oh, it has some, let's look at this. It had some little, from its own manufacturer, it has some little, so this is oxidation. It's kind of ripping my skin. But there's, um, there's a little burr on it right there. And that burr should chip off if it's so fragile now. I wonder, no, let me think about this. The problem with doing this just as an experiment is there's no kind of um, calibrated test to, to, to compare, you know, what I did versus what if I hadn't done that. The screw seems pretty tough still. So all this black stuff is just oxidation and then some burned crap, you know, just dirt that was on it. But um, I don't know what conclusion to, dr to draw from this experiment. Except for probably trust the experts and um, it's probably not helpful to heat treat your own work pieces that have been created on a lathe out of steel.
And again, this, this screw was a stock screw from just my spare screws. I didn't create it. But I was, I was wondering if I should harden this. And I don't think, there's no reason for a screw like this, which is quite large and strong just by virtue of how much material it has. I don't think it needs to be hardened. I won't over tighten it. Hopefully I won't break it and it'll do its job for a long time. All right, so there's the, um, oh, the good thing about these videos is that people will watch them and then they'll be like, oh, you know, this or that. And they'll share their knowledge about heat treating on your workbench, what, what you can do and what you can't do. And I look forward to seeing those comments. All right, thanks a lot.